So can you tell me a little bit how you first became enamored with Tiffany and his artwork? Yes. Um, when I was a little girl, my grandparents lived in Brooklyn in a, in a house on East 3rd Street that they had bought um, in 1920s or 19, actually the 19 teens. And there was a Tiffany window in that house, a little one of roses. And I was just fascinated by the way the light played when I was really little. And I would sit on the floor and chase the light. And my mother really loved my interest in art. She was a photographer. My grandmother was an artist. So she was very, um, she did a lot to inspire me and make sure that I developed that interest in art. So she started taking me around New York to see all the Tiffany windows that we could find. And I just became, I just fell in love with stained glass and all other kinds of art. And I lived across the street from here, so we were always here. My mother didn't like the playground, so instead of the <laughs> playground, she would bring me here. I was always in love with the windows, and that window in particular. So these are the actual columns. Now, this is the view. This is not from the house, mm -hmm. but this window with the wisteria is the view from the house that Tiffany had designed, and it was in somebody else's house, but the windows were like this in the house. It's just not the exact one. And I have a little replica of this in my window at home. I looked at this the whole time I was writing the book because this is what Tiffany looked at out the window, this is what Jenny looked at out the window, and Oliver, and this is what they saw. And it was so, it was such a perfect way to be inspired was to have something real to add to the imagination so that I could really see what they saw even though they weren't real. And these were also the same kind of windows. These weren't in the house, but the, again, they're descriptions of the same windows in the house. And if in the hardcover, when you open it up, it has end papers. And because these are my favorite windows, they did oh, the end papers beautiful. from this. And you so. can see, even in here, yes. the, the layers that yeah. you and, spoke about. And the fact that they used these little round jewel-like ones to make the grapes instead of in a medieval window or even a window from the 1800s they would have just drawn them so it was really special when you look at that one from far away the colors become even more absolutely astounding that that's not a painting when you look at that sunset and that that lake between the mountains it's so incredible that it's not that, that it's glass. Right, because from th this distance, all those individual pieces that you can right. see up close have all melded together. Right. So this is another window that he did that really shows all of that same amazing depth. And you can look at the back of it and really get a great idea of what went into it, right? This is one of the back of it. Yeah. I think the back is just sort of as exciting as the front because you can really see how cut out it is and how many layers there are on it. Yeah. It's beautiful no matter which side you yeah. look at it from. To me, this also looks a lot like the, the window that she saw, that Jenny saw in the mausoleum. A little bit of the irises and the, the water. I mean, it's different in the book, but this is very similar to that one. This is my favorite one. The light in the irises little touch. Irises are so beautiful. Yeah. And um, this is some of his jewelry, which really, which I discuss in the book a lot, but you can really see, looking around this, these colors were really unusual for a jeweler to be using at the time. There weren't a lot of jewelers using all these semi-precious stones. It was much more, you know, diamonds and emeralds and rubies and sapphires and pearls. And he, he loved beauty so much that if he found beauty in something, it didn't matter. The orange stones, it's like one of the very few instances where you can see the garnets are just, just those colors are unbelievable. And there are even amber beads in there. Opals were another favorite of his stones because when you really look at an opal, it really looks like stained glass. It really has that same iridescent, opalescent, all those colors. It looks like painters created each one of those stones. And that's one of the most beautiful pieces I've ever seen of his use of opals to make grapes. And then he also loved and used moonstones, which was another unusual choice. It was not a very popular stone, but there's that same, again, you see the opalescence and the magic of how light plays with stones in his favorite kinds of jewelry. These are two of the lamps. And he had a lot of designers, and there's a really interesting story about the women who designed for him, who got no credit in their lifetime, who did get credit about 20 or 30 years ago. They finally started talking about the women who really designed these things. Women were 
better laborers. And they had the whole workshop of making the glass was mostly women. And um, when they got married, they had to leave. But his most famous designer got married, had to leave, then got divorced and came back. And she did the wisteria lamp. She did some of the major lamps. It was very close col collaboration. They were really involved. This is my favorite Tiffany that isn't a window, the peacock feather vase. And um, I keep giving people the little peacock feather um, thing that they have in the bookstore, the little uh, book uh, paperweight. But th this whole iridescent thing is what they were just so incredible at creating. We talked a little bit earlier, and I didn't catch it on tape, about his use of the peacock color. Can you yeah. tell me a little um, bit about that again? Tiffany was fascinated with peacocks because of the ir natural iridescence of their beauty, and he tried to recreate the color of a peacock's tail and the colors in a peacock's tail in his art. And a lot of people feel that he, more than any other artist, managed to do that. And when you look at a piece of Tiffany glass that's iridescent peacocks or any of the mosaic works that have that iridescent blue, green, purpley color, you see how closely he studied peacocks. He had them all over Laurelton Hall. And um, they play a big part in the book.